WWE through the 2010s could be pretty rough watching. The alternative to Raw and SmackDown booking the authorities Big Show and Kane against two equally bland babyfaces every week was actually WWE's developmental. The black and gold brand was the punk rock to the main roster's family-friendly radio. It was cooler, it was edgier, and it had something to prove. I'm sorry for WhatCulture.com and here are 10 times NXT black and gold was better than literally everything. Number 10, NXT TakeOver Brooklyn. SummerSlam 2015 was actually pretty solid from an entertainment perspective. The booking decisions? Less great, with The Undertaker needlessly getting his win back a year and a half after Lesnar broke the streak, and talk show host Jon Stewart getting inexplicably involved in Cena vs Rollins. Even as a show that most agreed was decent enough though, NXT had made numerous huge statements at TakeOver Brooklyn the night before that would put it above SummerSlam quite easily. How does a match of the decade contender from two young upstarts called Sasha Banks and Bayley grab you? Because the boss had already moved up to the big time, Bayley's championship victory was inevitable, but no less impactful. In some ways it was a true end of an era moment and the beginning of something new as very soon WWE would have to start doing more than the bare minimum with their women's division. After all, SummerSlam hadn't even booked a women's title match and instead had three arbitrary teams duking it out for an underwhelming 15 minute. Brooklyn also saw an incredible ladder match main event between Owens and Balor, the debut of Apollo Crews, and incredibly featured Jushin Thunder Liger in his only WWE match. Number 9, Tag Team Wrestling Mattered. There's a reason that Brooklyn needed to be mentioned right out of the gate because it was such a statement of intent for how WWE could do so much more with its women's division. But NXT didn't stop there in doing what the main roster wouldn't. Vince McMahon's inconsistent interest in tag team wrestling had long been an issue in WWE, and so NXT felt like it was a breath of fresh air. It presented something to WWE fans that they hadn't felt for a very long time by making its tag division as valuable as its main event scene. Teams would often close out weekly episodes of NXT and have plenty of time to establish their characters and feuds. You didn't have to like their style, but giving the Ascension nearly 400 days with the belts was a huge setup for the prestige that would follow. In that same time in 2014, WWE passed the main roster tag titles around four times. In the 200 days that they held them, the Usos defended the belts a paltry six times. But from the Ascension's reign, a division was born. NXT had a slew of teams coming through, all interacting with each other and almost always having show-stealing matches. Often opening takeovers, the likes of American Alpha, The Revival and DIY were putting on clinics that most mainstream WWE fans didn't realise tag wrestling could even provide. Number 8, NXT TakeOver London. WWE's Clash at the Castle was a big deal for international fans as it was the first major premium live event the company had run in Europe for 19 years. But sometime during that dark period, NXT was doing what WWE wouldn't, and the crowd was red hot for it. This, as it often does, fueled the in-ring work of the hungry black and gold roster. As the third brand of the company, there was always an underground element and a palpable air of sticking it to the man. The London crowd in December 2015 embraced NXT, and NXT fed off that energy, delivering a very solid night of action. Results-wise, this wasn't a show of big surprises. Bailey, Finn Balor, and The Revival retained their gold against their challengers. Corbin continued his NXT mean streak. But it was live WWE of more consequence than the biannual episodes of Raw in the UK, and fans were more than happy to eat it up. The event was so over that it can easily be assumed that it is in part responsible for the idea of the UK Championship Tournament a year later, the arrival of the NXT UK Championship, and all of the good that eventually comes with it, like Butch and Gunther. Number 7, the formation and crowning of the Undisputed Era. Long before the bloodline became the hottest stable in wrestling, there was another. Before Roman broke records with the world title, Adam Cole became the longest reigning NXT champion. Before the Usos stood alongside their leader with tag belts, the Undisputed Era was draped in gold. When Cole, O'Reilly and Fish debuted, they could have gone the same way as most groups in the company, being used to put over already established stars. After all, the era's black and gold colour scheme bore a striking resemblance to the Nexus, and their eventual fate is infamous. So it's with praise to both the NXT booking team and the Undisputed Era themselves that they did something few groups have ever managed to do by capturing all of the prizes in the company. Their cocky frat boy behaviour, which often crossed the line into outright idiocy see Roderick Strong's therapy session skits, didn't detract from their ability to get things done in the ring. Capturing all the gold in NXT, as well as plenty end of year rewards, made sure they defined the brand. The closest WWE had to the UE at this time, in terms of quality stables, was the now defunct Shield. And despite their own brilliance, these are things the Hounds of Justice simply cannot say. The Undisputed Era punched up to the heights of DX and NWO when it came to having total control over the territory they marked as their own. Number 6, War Games in NXT has never been top.
popped. In its best moments, NXT felt like the show that Vince McMahon forgot even existed. Head Booker Triple H did some of his best work when he could pull the reins in ways that surprised fans that were used to WWE's very defined edges. Some of this was the usage of the catalogue of copyrights the company had acquired in 2001 from WCW and left dormant. The most pivotal of these, of course, was the return of best regal impression at the ready, WAR GAMES! NXT's revival of the two-ring cage structure was refreshing after 17 years away, and even more so against the backdrop of the tired formula of Hell in a Cell. More than this, in terms of the modern era, it's never been bested. WWE adopting the gimmick for Survivor Series 2022 created some fantastic storytelling moments for the bloodline. AEW's own blood and guts bouts have been entertaining in their own right, but production issues have stopped them from achieving their potential. But NXT knocked it out of the park every single time from the word go, utilising the space and teams involved to run stories through the match as well as create a series of incredibly memorable spots. Io Shirai diving off the ropes with a trash can on her head, anyone? Number 5 NXT TakeOver Chicago When it comes to takeovers that show roster depth, few do it better than 2017's Chicago show. The women's title was defended in a triple threat match between Asuka, Nikki Cross and Ruby Riot, which seems totally star-studded in retrospect. The men's championship meanwhile was contested in a particularly interesting pairing of Bobby Roode and Hideo Itami. Perhaps the gem of the entire show was the masterpiece put on display by Pete Dunne and Tyler Bate, arguably writing the booking mistake of the UK Championship Tournament by having the Bruiserweight take the title that was rightfully his. This began not just an incredible reign, but kicked open the door for the expansion of the black and gold. Regardless of its ultimate outcome, it was an attractive advertisement for the NXT UK spin-off. The whole event closed with the first time the NXT Tag Team Championships had been defended in the main event of a takeover, with DIY being crushed by the Authors of Pain. This, of course, led to their memorable dissolution. And what about Backlash also taking place that weekend? Largely not memorable. Does the Charlotte Flair hating stable the welcoming committee ring any bells at all? But absolutely tragic where it was, as it saw Jinder Mahal capture the WWE Championship to a general reaction of, you've got to be kidding. Number 4, Gargano vs Champa. Wrestling storylines come in all tones and length, but there's something truly special about the long play. A rivalry that takes place over several years, ebbing, flowing and evolving is often remarkable. If done right, it can make for the most effective and memorable stories in the sport. Gargano vs Champa has a case to be one of the best rivalries in WWE history. Not only did it deliver all of the above, even surviving and eventually reigniting through several unfortunately timed injuries, but it also delivered in ring with every encounter outdoing the previous, perhaps with the exception of the empty arena one final beat match. This feud began in a strange era for WWE's main roster. As previously mentioned, Mahal was WWE champion and Lesnar was embarking on his 500 plus day Universal Championship reign where he was barely seen on TV. The company struggled with putting over any major babyfaces, let alone creating new ones. Gargano and Ciampa's story through its runtime proved that they could both work different ends of the spectrum. Ciampa was a versatile baddie and sympathetic anti-hero whilst Gargano made for an unorthodox heel when he wasn't the beating heart of NXT as a face. The storyline weaved in ways that allowed them both to shine their brightest over the three years, constantly subverting expectations and making sure that, regardless of whatever else was happening, NXT was still worth watching. Number 3 NXT TakeOver R Evolution Despite being a contender for one of the worst pay-per-view names WWE have ever used, TakeOver R Evolution is perhaps no better example of NXT as a statement. The first two events were decent fun, but 2014's was where NXT stood up, looked at Raw and SmackDown and said, we are not the same. At first glance, the card seems quite quaint and there are only 45 minutes of action in two hours. Corbin smashes through Dillinger in less than a minute, Charlotte defends the title against Sasha Banks for the first time in a swift 12 minutes, but she does so kicking off a 5 plus year rivalry. Exciting New Japan signees Finn Balor and Hideo Itami team together against developmental stalwarts The Ascension in a minor grudge match. Also of note, Corey Graves starts his commentary career this night. But the turning point that takes place at our revolution is super babyface Sami Zayn reaching the peak of the mountain, gaining the NXT Championship and embracing his longtime companion and new signee Kevin Owens. And in the last two minutes of the show, the inevitable happens with Owens wiping Zayn out with a powerbomb on the apron. Conversely, that weekend WWE had run TLC with a stairs match between The Big Show and Eric Rowan. Woohoo! Number 2 NXT wins Survivor Series 2019 This one is a bit more kayfabe than the rest, but it would have been silly to disregard the night that WWE put over NXT in the biggest possible way. Survivor Series brand warfare as a concept is typically easy to mock, because who has a particular stake in Raw over SmackDown or vice versa? Adding NXT into the mix in 2019 changed that attitude completely. Simply put, NXT 
NXT fans really cared about their show as the little underground runt of WWE's brands, and it was suddenly trading blows with the established TV shows. It was one of the rare years that Survivor Series kept proper score across the board, with the show going off the air alongside a startling image of a victorious Shayna Baszler and the final standings of 4-2-1 to the black and gold. The night got off to a hot, intriguing start when Leo Rush overcame cruiserweights on the other two brands, the NXT ladies won the 5 on 5 on 5 tag match, and Strong beat Nakamura and Styles to give NXT a heavy lead. At this point, SmackDown could only hope to tie, and shockingly, that wasn't the case. Tribalism in wrestling may be stupid, and it was all booked this way to improve NXT's profile for better TV rights deals, but for this one night, it wasn't just shown as on equal footing as Raw and SmackDown, it viciously stomped on their feet. And number one, NXT TakeOver Dallas. When it comes to the best singles wrestling match of 2016, there is a very easy answer. Nakamura's jump from New Japan to NXT was a hell of a thing to witness, and he kicked it off in style with an unforgettable bout against Sami Zayn. But whilst this was the show stealer of the entire year, never mind that evening, NXT TakeOver Dallas was a card that showcased everything fresh and exciting about WWE's developmental brand. The emotions of Nakamura's arrival and Zayn's fitting departure landed in the middle of a card that kept the crowd on their feet all evening. The show opened with Super Over American Alpha securing the NXT Tag Team titles to huge elation. Elsewhere, Asuka submitted Bayley to be crowned NXT Women's Champion. Times were changing, but the future was no less thrilling. NXT felt like essential viewing in a vacuum that night, but this was only elevated by what was to come that weekend. WrestleMania 32 is commonly believed to be one of the worst in the history of the show of shows. It was an overlong mess with stale booking and WWE at the height of their total delusion about Reigns as a babyface. Meanwhile, NXT had put on a match with Zayn and Nakamura that people still talk about with reverence eight years later. And that's the list. Let us know what you thought down in the comments below. What are your favourite moments of NXT Black and Gold? As you could have probably guessed, it's my favourite brand of all time, so I will be checking out those comments. Don't forget to like this video, subscribe, and head over to whatculture.com for more content every day. I've been Sai for What Culture, and have a good week.